Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We are Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. We bless thee with the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We are Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of all the Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise your Susan, can you hear me, sister? Yes, brother, perfectly.
Susan, can you hear me? Yes, brother, perfectly. So, so then, can you hear me? Yes, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Zan, will you start with a small opening prayer for us, sister, please? Your brother, praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Holy Spirit, we thank you and we praise you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus, your only Son. Jesus, we thank you for giving us a comforter, our helper, our advocate, our strengthener, our standby, the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for each and every participant gathered here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for taking complete control of this session. And we thank you for speaking to us through Brother Alan tonight and teaching us, speaking to each one of our hearts on how to incinerate inferiority complex, Lord. Lord, we thank you for revealing all the truths to us tonight. We thank you for giving us plenty of practical examples. And we thank you, Lord, for showing us how to put those examples into practice in our day-to-day -day lives. And also for showing us how to share that word with the people that we meet, Lord. And to be doers of the word, not just hearers of your word, Lord. To be doers of your word. Lord, we thank you that we you have heard our prayer and answered it in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Amen. As there are new people the Lord has brought in, it's my duty to tell you that this is going live and the camera is focused on me, so your faces won't be shown. But whatever you talk, people can hear. Is that okay with you? Yes. Frida? Thank you. You're okay, God? Thanks. Well, we have been, the Spirit of the Lord has been giving us various topics as we venture into every Saturday night. And as we have discussed, when we every time when we pray our Lord's Prayer, we say, Deliver us from evil. And what are those evil? We often say, Evil is something outside me, but rather the worst, the worst evil is what is inside me. The outside one I can easily recognize. But the one which is inside of me is the worst enemy. Who are those? Fear, worry, anger, guilt, and inferiority complex. In this, the Holy Spirit has made us to discuss 
quite a lot about how to overcome fear, how to overcome worry, and how to overcome anger. And for the past two weeks, the Spirit of the Lord guided us how to overcome guilt as well. He, he, he leaded us, not for the past two weeks, a couple of weeks ago. So today, to complete this, the Spirit of the Lord is leading how to incinerate, how to burn, how to reduce into ashes this evil called inferiority complex. Praise the Lord. What is inferiority complex? You think you are not good enough? Okay. No confidence. Putting yourself down. Okay. Comparing, comparing yourself with other people. Yeah. Sorry, Peggy. You feel that you are the tail and not the head. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Suzanne. Thank you. Okay. There are few things that as we are in our childhood, we need to receive. Respect, security, love, affection, and confidence. Love, security, respect, confidence. When a child which is not wanted, very often we do see when children were adopted and they often say one thing to me is, my biological parents doesn't want me. Yes? This feeling of rejection, why? They feel they are not being wanted. They feel they are not being cherished. They feel they are not loved enough by the biological parents. There where they are ending up in having a rejected feeling. Okay. Now, if this child grows in this sort of a temperament, when this child grows, this child begins to exhibit certain characteristic features. They feel inferior and they often compare with some other classmates. They can compare themselves with their own siblings whom they are raised with now currently. This comparison is a very dangerous one. It is, if you see in these people, when they grow up, they will be very regimental in following rules and regulations. In other terms, they will try to be perfectionist. They were rejected in one side of their life and they want to get acknowledgement from others for that they make their compensatory mechanism to be very good. Everybody has to, they want that appreciation from everyone. Oh. They'll be very observant to follow the rules and regulations, but they will be, they will be breaking the spirit. Oh, example. They can be a manager of a 
place. And here, Amal comes late. And I'm saying, sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late because um, I have to drop my child, which is accidental, and I'm late. A person who has accepted himself or herself in Christ Jesus as I am will always be able to address this very in a human, in a loving way. How oh, he or she can say, it's all right, Tamil, I have been there. I know what you mean. Look, it's okay. Let's catch up work now. It's already late. The other way around, a person who has not accepted herself or himself as he is, they will quote all the stringent rules. I'm going to give you one hour annual leave. I'm going to reduce your pay for this hour. They'll be very stringent to follow the rules and they will break the spirit because they want that appreciation from their boss. A classical future of a person who has this evil called inferiority complex, where it stems from. As I told you from the childhood. Now, you may think, is it a psychology class? Aha, uh -huh, definitely not. Because Hebrews 4.12 says, sister, can we have Hebrews 4.12, sister, please? The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from the spirit, joints from the marrow, and it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Is there any medication to treat our spiritual problems? Is there any medication to sort out our mental issues? I can put my body to sleep. But is there any cure? No. And definitely, the word of God can pierce the joints and marrow. That means the most protected part of your body, it can pierce. That means it is so strong. So it is a one-stop shop for all of our physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. Praise the Lord. So this person who has had this issue of an inferiority complex, where it stems from? It stemmed from not being loved, not being cherished, not being wanted. Yes? You agreed? Have you seen a couple of people? I've seen so many faces nodding. Yes. But instead of expecting this love, security, cherishment, needed wantedness from a person, from a creation, was the issue. And they did not know that, unfortunately. There is an eternal source. Give me Jeremiah 31, 3, sister, please. And the Lord says, I will love you with everlasting love and you pray to me for three hours every day. Hmm? That's my Bible verse. I'll repeat it. I will love you with everlasting love when you pray to me every day, kneeling down for three hours. Have love with you. 
Even in the Old Testament, even before the supreme sacrifice of Christ for you and me in Calvary, our Heavenly Father has given everyone a promise that He has loved. Not with the fluctuating love of what human beings. Example. Joe, have you ever forgotten what's last birthday? Well, once now tell me, tell me, was there a World War Three at home? Why oh, should the most intimate relationship in a human being between a husband and wife is marked by husband's performance towards wife and wife's performance towards husband? Agree. Okay. Example. Have you ever forgotten this is you are a clever man? And example, example. If today is my wife's birthday and I gave her a watch, would she be happy? But women are fine, it's quite pretty hard, at least. I, I understand that, but at least would that make her happy? Usually, yes. Well, I, I, I use, I'll exercise caution. Usually, usually yes. Just for fun. There's a big, big Rolex here. Whereas, I forgot. So when I go home tonight, Picture. Even, sorry? Picture and no sound. No sound. There will be definitely World War Three, But the difference is, my Lord, our God, His love towards me never ever wavers with my performance. He shown his mercy. He is loving me the same way he loved St. Teresa of Calcutta. He loved the same way he loved St. Ignatius of Loyola. He loved the same way everyone else in this world. The word Bible uses here is an everlasting love. Never ending, never wavering, never fluctuating. God's love is not like an EZG graph, PQRST wave. No, 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 no. Flat wave. Which does not expect my performance. And this child, which expected the love from the parents, love from A, B, and C people, and they have not got, they begin to compare the love somebody else have received from their parents or from their siblings. Bible, scripture invites today to such people. Here is a mighty creator, dear brother, dear sister. You are expecting this love from a creation which is wavering. But here is our creator telling you that he has loved you as an everlasting love. Never ever waver. And here he says, Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Do we all know Psalm 91 by heart? You know, very famous. Don't you? Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will say unto the Lord. Sister, give me Psalm 91, sister. 
fourth verse is my very important one. He will cover me and you with his pinions. Under his wings, you and I will find refuge. And my faithfulness towards my spouse is a shield and buckler. Huh? Whose faithfulness? Hey. Who? Uh -huh. Can you echo this between Jeremiah 31.3 and Psalm 91.4? It is his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. His faithfulness was so rigid that even at the height of Calvary, the passion of Christ, most of you might have watched. When the flesh was torn into pieces, his faithfulness was holding on to say, if I die for my people, their life is saved. His faithfulness was continuing when the very heavy cross was bossed on his shoulders, already battered and bruised. He was, his faithfulness was holding on to that heavy cross to save you and me. At the height of the Calvary, when this, this was pulled up naked, instead of covering the shame, the hands, the faithfulness, spread out the hands. That's his faithfulness. In that faithfulness, it's a shield and buckler. Question. Have I understood this shield and buckler in my life? We often compare the unfaithfulness shown to me by my parent, by my siblings, by my friend, by my A, B, and C. And I feel inferior. Here is a person who was shattered, broken into pieces. Died a horrific death. An excruciating, painful death. And do you know that the Romans are experienced in the torture? It is not like Jesus was nailed here. It was nailed here. Why? There is a tendon. In that stretch, to take one breath, he has to pull up his whole body to take one breath in that agonizing pain. Apart from being battered and bruised and the, uh, and the skull being pierced with that scratching, stinking crown of thorns. His faithfulness was every time looking at you and me. My friend, did you ever consider looking at that wonderful love? Did you ever consider that when I put on his faithfulness, it will become a shield and buckler? How? It will protect me by not getting into this evil called inferiority complex. Why? I know my creator has always loved me with an everlasting love. It's my choice. My friend, when I begin to look into the expectation of being loved, cared, nourished, cherished by a creation, that was my choice. And I get ended up getting feeling inferior that my mother rejected me, my father rejected me, my brother rejected me, A, B, and C. What about? I failed to turn to a person who created me 
and gave his total life for me. Now, question, when I have that faithfulness, will that act as a shield and buckler not to get in into this inferiority complex? Yeah. Did we know that? Making wrong choices and conclusions. Always, as I told you, even the intimate relationship of a human being is between a husband and wife. Even that depends upon either ones of performance in their day-to-day -day life. And his faithfulness does not depend upon my performance, but rather the performance of Christ in Calvary. Now tell me, if a person begins to turn to that love, will that be any issue? Just so give me John chapter 12, please. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They, there they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of a costly perfume made of pure nad, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. Mm. No, sister. Um, a similar one in Luke. Luke 7, sister. Sorry. Give me Luke 7. Luke 7, 36. Please. Uh -huh. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a very good person, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bear his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. She continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of a woman this is who is touching him, that she is a lovely lady. Sorry. Jesus spoke up and said to Simon, I have something to say to you, teacher. He replied, speak. A certain creditor has two debtors, one owned 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, you judge rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet. But she bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown, shown, shown to whom, to whom. Okay. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Question comes here. This lady, as we are studying from Luke 7, 36, she led a very sinful life, right? 
does that made her to feel guilty, inferior or than other women in the town? Yes. Yeah. Was she invited in that into the Pharisee's house? No. How would one feel? Have you ever been to eat in any uh, marriage marriage um, marriage dinner without being invited? Did you ever try? Huh? Sorry. Gate crashed. Gate crashed. means to go go somewhere you shouldn't be. Oh, oh, okay, okay. You need to talk to me in simple English, maybe. I'm really learning. Yes. Sorry. Yes. For you, who are born, brought up, raised here. I'm only learning. No, no. You just woke up. Leave me alone. Who has never ever experienced this? So give me once again 36. That's something important the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Anybody having pain in your neck? Anyone? Okay, we'll talk later. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. Sister, will you highlight that 37th verse, having learned? Was she a simple woman? So somebody who met her told her that Jesus is visiting this Pharisee's house. The word is learned. Without somebody teaching, how can you learn? Hello? Does it, does it sing to you? Yes. Now, a person, a man who went into her house, what, how he would have been judged by the person who sees going into her house? He would be judged. He is going to do some sin. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. But there can be a person, a messenger, like you and me, to go and give that good news that person full of love is visiting. Jesus, a man full of love, is visiting you. That's our job. How do they know? That lady, having brought this sin against sin and against sin, there was no satisfaction. She never felt love. She never felt wanted. She never felt cherished. Right? How much would she be feeling inferior in her heart but there was some good Samaritan there who went and told her the man full of compassion, a man full of love for you, a man who loves you with an everlasting love, a man who is appreciating you as you are, who never judges you, is in your near vicinity. There. But then, when she got out of the house, what did she took? She took an alabaster jar of ointment. Hello? In those days, an alabaster jar of ointment is equivalent to an year's salary. Okay? So, I'm sorry, I'm saying if it is a staff nurse salary, I'm talking of 45,000 euros worth of an perfume. Did she consider that money 
that she yearned from people who never loved her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. From people who never cherished her. From those people who never ever made her to feel respected. She took that perfume. She took that money made to turn to make this perfume at the feet of the person who is loving her with an everlasting love. Question here. Who's, did Jesus invite that lady? Or the lady has to make a choice to come to him? We make choice. God waits. Jesus is waiting. He waits for you and me patiently. I need to make the first step. God, the loving Father, in the in the in the in the Gospel of Luke, you know, you know, in the the prodigal son, God the Father did not went in search of the prodigal son in the land of famine. He waited. Until the prodigal son makes the decision to come back to his father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The days of rejection, the days of false intentions are being destroyed in the name of Jesus. At this moment, never more in your life, dear sister. We'll go back, sister. And she took that yearnings from those people who rejected, from those people who, who never loved her, who never ever respected her. And bringing, she took a decision to bring that to the person who is loving her with an everlasting love. She told, without opening, without speaking, her actions were speaking louder than her words. One year salary. She's putting at the feet of Jesus. Question here is, she did not, the word I have to use here is, she did not consider that money more important than being loved and accepted. She found the right person. When somebody told her, and with that fear, with that tears, she was drying out with her hair and utter humility. Lord, I am such a sinner. How do you can love me so much? How can you accept me as I am? We'll go a little further, sister, please. Oh, sister, please. You go for that. Yeah, thank you. And here, the Pharisee seeing this lady as a sinner. How did Jesus is narrating this lady? When you invited me, you never gave me water to wash the bees. A customary practice of Jews. Which I wonder, you remember in Gospel of John chapter 2, you know that marriage at Canaan, those stone walls which are kept outside for purification purpose. This person did not give that. And it is a custom that when after washing the feet, when a Jew enters the, um, the invitee, it's always they greet them with a kiss. He did not do that either. 
Jesus is comparing what this Pharisee failed to do. The Pharisee is emphasizing what failure this lady is. Jesus taking the stand with that lady who is feeling so inferior. So far, her love for money, her love for power, her love for acceptance, her love for love, her love for to be respected, all she was expecting from the creations. But when she identified, when she learned that there is a man who loved me with his eternal love, there I am submitting myself to him. And Jesus telling that lady, she has shown great love to whom? To whom? So now question comes to people who are feeling inferior that you are not good for anything. You cannot do this. You are comparing yourself with A, B, and C. Did you ever, ever tried showing that love to Christ? Who never rejected you? Who never said you are wrong? Did she ever say, why did you do all the wrong things? Did he ever ask? Did she ever put her down? Did she emphasize anything? She was standing. She took side with this lady and told the Pharisee, when I entered your house, you did not give me water to wash my feet. When I came in, you did not give me a kiss. You did not give me anointment. You did not give me oil in my head. And then she said to her, the beauty is, she has shown great love. Loving Jesus means doing as per what the commandments say. Love is an verb. L verb denotes an action. Am I right? So love is not to be told, I love you. Do it in action. He, he, is, he put it, his love in action in the passion of Christ. He did not merely say, I love you with it, everlasting love. He proved it in action. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So dear, anyone feeling inferior of any kind of in your life? First time. Did you choose to look at other creations, other human beings? Or did you choose to look at the creator? It's your choice. There is a person who never ever ridicules you, who accepts you as you are. Okay. Where did he show this example? I have to tell you. At 10 past 6, I was in Limerick. And in Glanmire at 25 past 6, sorry, 25 past 7. On the way, asking the Spirit of the Lord to tell me how to explain this complex called inferiority complexity to everyone. I still remember crossing Fermai, he gave me this explanation where, where you are cruising at 120. He never disconnects with you and me. He always connects, always. When you sleep, when you, when you brush. I have to say, there are so many explanations he has given me while I'm brushing my teeth. Prayer is not something at a particular place, at a particular thing. That is a structured one. 
the spirit of the Lord always would love to engage with you and me at all times. Can I say another example he gave me, crossing for my? We'll go to Gospel of John, chapter 4. Please, sister. We all know this. How many times this scripture has come across? But every time the Spirit of the Lord has some message totally new, totally different from the same scripture. That is why Bible, if somebody says that they have studied the Bible, you can never. The whole Bible, no. You can read from cover to cover as a novel, as a newspaper. Nothing will go in. Here he says, Sister, will we go up a little? Jacob's twelve, Jacob's twelve, four, six. Six verses, please, Summers. Thank you. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon time. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and said to her, give me a drink. His disciples has gone to the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, how is that a you, a Jew, ask of a drink of me, a woman of Samaria, because Jews do not share things in common with Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him that he would have given you a living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. And the water that I will give will become in them. The water I will give will become in them or outside them. Where are we searching? In them, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Jesus said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may be never be thirsty or to have to keep coming here to draw water. As we explained before, a number of times, she is preferring to come at a noon day. Have you been to Holy Land? Me? Yeah. yeah. Lovely weather? Yeah. Would you ever go to fetch water in a noon day? At 40 degrees Celsius? <laughs> normally women, I've seen in my own country initially, we normally try to go and fetch water in the, either the early morning before 10 o'clock because of the heat won't be much or only after five. To avoid the heat. This lady. Leading a life. Of another sinful nature. Felt so inferior. So inferior. Than other women. That nobody communicates to her. Nobody in that village. Interacts with her. Nobody wanted. Nobody cherished her in that village. Nobody respect her in that village. And there, in that vacuum and lacune, she was trying to get this love, affection, attention, and respect from the so-called men who are living with her. Whenever I try to find, try to satisfy this lacune in my life with any sort of a creations, there where the trouble starts. Instead of going to the eternal source, I'm going to the seasonal source. Seasonal source will be like ECG graph. Praise the Lord. And there, in that inferior nature, he's telling to Jesus, give me that water. I don't have to come to here at all. I don't need to mingle with anybody. No problem. I don't have to worry about this heat. 
inferiority complex will drive you to walk under the heat of that negativity in your heart and in my heart. Like that lady who was made to walk to fetch this water in an, such a noonday. Why? She doesn't even mind that heat, but the heat that she felt in her heart of rejection, feeling inferior, nobody wanted, nobody loved. And that is where if people with inferiority complex are able to punish themselves. Self-harm all comes into play. Joe, yeah. do you tell people not to talk to me? Everybody looking very... We're learning. I'm also learning with you, Joe. Any paper? Well, certainly, Edel. I think, I think say, mm. You have a family and you would say, I'm repeating for the audience. We the same. All the kids will be reared the same. There are also different. We don't even say that the parents love the kids equally. The parents equally love all the children, but they may feel different. Where is their focus? I understood. I was brought. I was born. I was brought up quite strict. Never ever, that made me to feel they never loved me. But today's generation is more caught up in self consciousness rather than God consciousness. They are so in into themselves that I need to express myself. Have you heard of it? Express yourself in the way the Lord wants you and me. Express yourself as a faithful child of God. Express yourself as with conviction in your heart how to be very diligent in every walk of your life. But one thing, thank you, Holy Spirit. Those children will understand what a mother, what a father has been to them when the, pa when the parents have genuinely those has taken care of these children. And they always say, oh, you are not a father, you are a dictator, you are not a mother, you are a monster. Have you heard of these things? When they become a mother, when they become a father, trust me, they will know what their mother and their father have sacrificed. But as far as a mother and a father is concerned, if you and I as a parent has been able to give our best to my children in the eyes of God the Father, whatever they say, where is your choice now? Looking at the words spoken by your children or looking at the words given by Heavenly Father to say, yes, my child, all your children are taught by the Lord and great is their peace. Instead of looking, oh my God, picking up the phone, bringing all my prayer group people, please pray for my child. My child has said like this. Instead, Take the mobile phone and tell the people to say this scripture. All my children are taught by the Lord and great is their peace. They are blessed to be a blessing to others and they call me and my husband as blessed in Jesus' name. His faithfulness is a shield and buff. Those words are spoken by the children. Cannot penetrate your heart because you have... God's faithfulness as a shield and buckler. Okay. okay. Where did we end, sister? Oh, we'll go to Gospel John chapter 4, sister. Please. Ah. 
and the narration of what the inferiority complex, self-infliction, self-harm, self-indulgence comes into play here. Jesus said, bring your husband. What did she say? And then Jesus said, you're right in saying, I have no husband. Sister, 18 to her sister, please. Woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Can you see the indulgence, the self-indulgence, that lack of respect, lack of lacune of love, lack of appreciation, lack of respect, made this self-harm, self-indulgence, back again and again. We are never to be satisfied. But you and I know, after talking to Jesus, did that inferiority complex was kept at the feet of Jesus? Yes? yes. The other lady sat at the feet of Jesus. This lady begins to talk with Jesus. The other lady begins to wipe in tears. This lady begins to understand the words being spoken by the creator. Did he ever condemn her? Did she ever look at her as a sinner? And then he said, you are a prophet. And she begins to have a very different conversation from there on. Yes. First and foremost thing of an inferiority complex to come out is sit at the feet of Jesus. To sit at the feet of Jesus means to sit before the blessed sacrament and take the sacred scripture. The promise of God to cut that evil from our life. We just read in the beginning, the word of God is alive and When we begin to study, meditate, like that lady, she sat at the feet of Jesus. The word and Jesus is the same. The promise of God and Jesus is the same. The word became flesh. Give me, sister. We'll come back here. John 1 1, please. 1 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word. Clear? So when you and I meditate upon the scripture, we are meditating upon Jesus. Okay. Sister, we go back, sister. Sister, we'll go to the, you know, she left that pot and went back into the Ah, what is the relevance that will come with a person who felt so inferior, rejected, delineated, and, and never loved, cherished by anyone, when you and I, that person who's having so feeling so inferior, begins to talk to the promise, begins to chat with the promise, begin to communicate with the promise of God, she left and walked off and did she speak to the people? The promise says she said to the people, right? Did she? The same person who felt so inferior not to talk to those people because I'm not loved, I'm not cherished, I'm not wanted, they are judging me. The same person, after talking to the promise of God, left that inferiority at the feet of Jesus, could able to go and face the same people, not as a tail, but as a head.
Oh, she said to them, come and see a man who told Could that be Messiah. In a moment that when that evil of inferiority complex lifted her, she became a prophetess. To the whole village, she gave the good news. Come and see. The whole village turned to Jesus. Do you know that? One lady sat at the feet of the promise. The other lady began to communicate with the promise. But both of them has to come to the promise. Both of them has to come to the Lord. And the Lord is even today waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Okay. There is another one happening. Many a times we feel when you are betrayed um, and you're not getting the equal share from your parents, you feel they have uh, they have not been fair enough and you feel that you are, inf you are treated inferiorly. Anybody? We have a in Bible every every situation there is situations there. Sister, could we go back to the book of Genesis, sister, please? Isa, thank you. Uh -huh. Do you know this history? Mother loud. Isaac has two sons, Jacob and. Esa. How do you pronounce? Isa. Isa. And mother loud, the younger fellow more. And she begin, she disguised him as the elder child, and Isaac blessed. From this story, sorry, apologies, from this history, 30th was onwards, as soon as Isaac has finished blessing Jacob. When Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of his father Isaac, his brother Isa came in from his hunting. He also prepared savory food and brought it up to his father. And he said to his father, let my father sit up and eat of his son's game so that you may. His father Isaac said to him, who are you? He answered, I am your firstborn son, Isa. Then Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me and I ate it all before you came and I have blessed him. Yes, and blessed he shall be. When Esau heard his fathers, he cried out with exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me also, father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and he has taken away your blessing. Esau said, is he not rightly named Jacob, for he has planted, supplanted me these two times? He took away my birthright, and he look, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered, Esau, I have already made him your Lord, and I have given him all his brothers as servants with grain and wine. I have sustained him. What then I can do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, have you only... One blessing, Father. Bless me also, Father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then his father Isaac answered him, See, away from the fatness of the earth shall be your home, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, you shall serve your brother, but when you break loose, you shall, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now Asa loved Jacob because... Huh? Hated, is it? Hated. Now Asa hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father has blessed. And Asa said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will love my brother more. Yeah. 
two scenarios here. Moment you feel you are despised, you feel inferior, this inferiority will make you to feel jealousy and that jealousy will finally end up in killing. We have another a classical example in Genesis, Abel and Cain. Abel was able to give the best to the Lord. Cain was different. When the Lord accepted one, Cain felt inferior. And that inferiority led to jealousy. And you know and I know what that jealousy led to. Okay. 42nd verse, sister. Now, but the words of her elder son, Esa, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called her younger son, Jacob, and said to him, your brother, Esu, is consoling himself by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice, flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran and stay him with him for a while until your brother Fury turns away. Until your brother's anger against you turns away and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send you and bring you back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Now, we all know. We'll go to the patch-up system. Please. Did Esu felt inferior? Hello? Does that inferiority was planning him to kill his brother? Now, when after, before, if you read Genesis 32, 31 and all, now Jacob has encountered the Lord now. Jacob, have you seen? He was fighting with an angel all the night. And when after encountered with the Lord, now Jacob is coming. To look up to Esau and saw Esau coming, 400 men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. But Esau, fourth verse, but Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. They wept. A reconciliation of not being feeling inferior can be given by a person who is anointed with the help of the Holy Spirit to give the love of Christ to them to feel embraced. Praise the Lord. This is few examples I can say. When I can accept me as I am, as we have already said, there are five stages of a relationship. We often put the third gear straight away. The vehicle will not move smoothly. The first gear is the relationship with myself. When I can accept me worthy in the eyes of God, as I am created, first gear is smoother. When I, when, if and only I can accept myself as I am, I will be able to accept my neighbor. When I cannot accept myself and I'm feeling inferior, I won't accept others. I will be judgeful. I'll be spiteful. I'll be angry. I'll be quoting all the rules, breaking the spirit, but quoting the law. I can't accept. So when I accept myself, as I'm being created in Christ, I can accept others as they are. When I, that means, that's what in John Gospel, Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. When I don't feel myself loved by my God, how will I pass on that love to others? First gear. Relationship with myself, accepting me as I am. Gear two, 
is relationship with others then when that goes smoother automatically my relationship with god will be good putting on the third gear straight away oh i am going to be spiritual i am going to be very intimate relationship with god with inferiority complex inside you pouring myself when i have that inferiority we discuss how that be how will i be able to loving my neighbor certainly not an example of following the rule and breaking the spirit is a classical example of the samaritan who is my neighbor the levite went and he said oh no i don't have time the priest went he didn't have time they were all looking after their own jobs a samaritan is a one who goes out of his way to help the injured the needy the feeling rejected nullified not being loved to go and bind their wounds in their heart with the love of jesus whenever the body is hurt we will have hemorrhage we will have bleeding right but whenever the spirit inside is crushed the mind is crushed with this inferiority complex they always will have coping strategies and these people with inferiority they will always try being perfectionist and trying to blame others for everything compensatory mechanism instead if they could come and sit at the feet of jesus praise the lord praise the lord any questions i thought joy when you get a bit ready i thought it is 9:30 any questions brother sorry there was one comment in zoom chat there from a sister who had said that she had a pain in her neck what's the question sister being asked and so uh, sorry I beg your pardon brother it's not, it's not a question and um, she just asked me to to mention that um she had a pain in her neck but was unable to unmute when you asked if if somebody had a, a pain in their neck ask her if that that is left her now please sister are you free to unmute or could you put it into the chat whether the pain is still there whether it's left uh, praise jesus it is still there praise yeah. jesus still there sister yes brother okay just keep repeating i am the beloved daughter of the most high god yes uh, uh, shall i repeat now uh, and just write it down i am... yeah you write it down and you repeat it and i'll call you after the meeting is over you will no longer I... have it i am what do you say sir? can you please repeat i am the beloved daughter beloved daughter yes of the most high god thank you brother god bless somebody has texted that they want a prayer for covid you can write i am the body of christ covid virus has no power over me and you can add on another one thing thank you jesus you have made my immunity great that okay so 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 then yes brother praise the lord thank you nila will you do that thanksgiving prayer for us nila if you can or if you are in a position to do uh yes ma'am i can do it you can hear me okay 
Oh, very, very loud and clear. Can you hear me, Mal? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this wonderful teaching tonight. In us, we have all the knowledge we need to set ourselves free and to break every hold of the devil in our lives. Come, Jesus, take your rightful place in our hearts and in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for setting us free. We plead your blood over all of our sins, all our sins that are within us, sins of envy, sins of fear, sins of jealousy, sins of inferiority complex. We ask you to break every hold, every hold that the enemy has over us. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.